What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. In this video, I want to talk about how to use the extension Placemaker um, to create cities on um, on heavily terrained areas, so areas that have like steep hills, that sort of thing. So um, let's go ahead and just jump into it. Um, before we get started, I do want to note that uh, for today only, um, that extension is 50% off. I'll link to that in the notes below. And uh, there's there's a bunch of other uh, Cyber Monday sales that are going on. I'll probably create another video on that, but um, I'll link to that in the notes below as well. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as a lot of you know, Placemaker is basically a city building extension where you can build a complete city in just a few clicks and it definitely is kind of a premium level extension but the functionality that includes is just a uh, kind of crazy I mean I've used it to build like New York City before I mean you can really just build a complete city um, and what I wanted to talk about today is how to use it to build cities that are on terrain and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the extension so the extension is right here and in order to get started you've got these three options in here well what you want to do is you want to click on this placemaker dialog and you can download the free trial for this um, at the sketchupessentials.com slash placemaker I will note that that trial is kind of a stripped down version um, so you're not gonna be able to do as much of this stuff um, but like I said before this is on sale for 50% off pretty much today only though so if you're watching this video anytime other than um, November 27th 2017 just disregard that note um, but what we're gonna do is we've clicked that placemaker dialog well now what we're going to do is we're going to click this option for select a place and so when you click select a place what that's going to do is that's going to bring up the add location function and when it brings up the add location function you can see how you can add a place into your model and it's basically the same um, dialog box as if you add maps out of SketchUp Pro but what we're gonna do in this case is I've selected a really hilly city um, Evergreen Colorado is basically a place up um, um, in the mountains it's basically a kind of a smaller town slash city that's built into the mountains it's really hilly but we can go ahead and build that using placemaker and so what you're gonna do is you're going to center your box on whatever you want to bring in in this case I've kinda centered this um, around this area that has this lake and there's some other buildings over here that sort of thing so um, we're, we're just gonna center that on I guess you would probably consider this like downtown evergreen but I'm just gonna go ahead and center this in here so that I've got these buildings I've got a little bit of the highway and I'm gonna click select region and that's gonna give me the option to kinda drag this box and move it around in this case I'm gonna go ahead and select grab you do have to be a little careful what you bring in if you're dealing with bigger cities in this case it's not really gonna matter um, but if you're doing like uh, San Francisco for example um, and there's a whole lot of different buildings you may want to shrink that down a little bit otherwise when you do this import process it could take a while and so what we're gonna know is this brings this in in kind of the same way that the Google Maps or not the Google Maps but the the imagery option brings things in um, so there's basically two options if you look in your layers there's a layer for your location snapshot and then it also brings in a terrain layer so you can see I can turn each one of those on and off Well, the terrain layer actually shows your hills and as you can see this is a pretty hilly area um, you can also toggle back and forth by clicking on the little um, toggle terrain button up in your location toolbar and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring the buildings from evergreen in and so to do that you can see there's all these different options for import options well in this case what we want to do is we want to bring in buildings and first I'm gonna bring them in the normal way because this will bring buildings in two ways so the first is if I just click on this little building button it's gonna bring in the building data for whatever surface I select so I need to click on this surface and then click on this building and what that's going to do is that's going to bring in all of your buildings for this area and you can see how this isn't a very big city so I don't get a ton of buildings but part of our problem here is if you look at this these all get brought in you can see how there's some buildings that get brought in over here but they don't get brought in based on the terrain data they get brought in based on just a straight flat um, map so like if I was to click this button and turn all of that off 
you can see how this just drops all of this straight down on this layer. Well, that's not really what we want. We want the city to be basically dropped on this surface. And so what we're going to do is we're going to delete those buildings out. And instead, what you're going to do is you're going to click the little drop down button next to buildings and you want to select the drop or the box for drop onto surface and you're going to click on this again and you do need to select your surface um, so click this and you're going to note this is going to take a while longer and the reason this is going to take a while longer is it's basically going to bring every building that this generates and it's going to drop them down on this surface so there's a lot more math that has to be done there's a lot more stuff that has to be generated so this will take a while and you do need to note that when, uh, whenever you're doing this. But now you can see how all of these buildings get dropped onto my terrain instead of being dropped at like this flat layer. So you can see how you can see all of these kind of showing through. These are all now, basically they follow the terrain of the area. And so basically every option on here has, or every, um, every import option has the same ability. So in this case for the roads, for example, if you were to click this and you didn't select this option for merge with surface, what's going to happen is it's just going to bring all those roads up at just kind of a flat location and won't be on your, on your surface. But what you can do is you can check this box for merge with surface when you bring your roads in and then click on that and that's going to bring all your roads in and that's actually going to merge them with your location terrain so your roads will actually follow the terrain so this is really powerful for modeling hilly areas and I will note that also takes a while because it has to bring all of those roads in it generates them based on the map data and then it has to merge them or drop them on this surface and so that takes a bit um, in order for that to work. So I'm just gonna let this work a little bit and then we'll come back in just a minute. All right, there we go. So you can see that took a while. That took several minutes for this to get brought in. And that may be a combination of my computer and also um, just the amount of work that this has to do. You can see how this has to drop a lot of roads on this light, on, um, on your terrain. And one thing to note here, and I'm gonna get this started working on the water while I talk. So same thing for the water. You just wanna click drop on surface. And basically what's gonna happen here um, I'm gonna let that work that's gonna bring this lake in but you can see how this brought in you can see how this brought in all of these roads and then it kind of stamped them down on this flat layer right here and so it actually has the roads in here and one thing I don't like is it seems to have brought them in and it didn't put them on its own layer and so what I'm gonna do is first of all I'm gonna rename this layer and I'm just gonna call this flat roads and I'm gonna go ahead and right click and hide that. Um, I'm gonna keep that geometry just in case, but you can see how now I've got a full city in here and I've also got roads that actually follow all the terrains, so all these hilly roads, that sort of thing. And you can see that it was super easy and we're gonna try the trees. Um, I'm not really sure what this is going to do um, because this city is in the middle of a forest. So I'll be interested to see how that works. But again, you just wanna make sure you check that drop onto surface option when you do this. All right. And you can see what I did is I saved my model. Um, just, just to make sure before I did this, just in case everything crashes, I didn't want to lose everything. Um, I recommend you always do that when you're dealing with stuff that takes a while to bring in. But we're going to go ahead and click on this trees option. Make sure this drop onto surface is checked. And that's right, you always have to select your surface. So you can go ahead and click on that and bring that in. And I'll be interested to see what that brings in actually. And you can see that actually didn't bring very much in. And one of the things about this is if the city data doesn't contain information about the trees, then it may not uh, bring that in. So the last thing we can try, let's see what this says. This says, see how this says no open street map data available? So you're not gonna get anything in here um, if that data is not available in open street map. So there's a lot of city areas like Chicago, New York that have some trees modeled in here. Um, I guess Evergreen doesn't necessarily have that information. So the last thing we're going to try is we're going to do the same thing with paths where we're just going to click the merge with surface and go ahead and click on the little person to bring that in. All right, so you can see this did the same thing that it did with the actual roads themselves um, where it brings in this path data and it brings in a flat version which would fit if we were on our flat, if we were on our flat um, geometry or it also stamped it down on the road below. So I'm just going to do the same thing in this case. What I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to select this. I'm going to rename this and we'll call it flat paths. And we'll just right click on that and hide that. So now what we've got is we've got a complete city with roads that follow our terrain. We've got buildings that are stamped on the terrain. We've got the paths that are noted in the city, like this one that goes around this lake here. And so basically we've got a complete city. We didn't get the tree data in here, but everything else, this is how you're going to take everything and put it on hilly terrain in Placemaker. And uh, do remember to check out that sale. Um, so I will link to that in the notes below. I will note I'm an affiliate for Placemaker, but I also just really love the extension and what it can do. That's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you like this extension? Do you have some kind of cool ideas of what you could do with this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.